is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today I wanted to go over using Mono Development with Unity. So the first thing you should do is head on over to mono-project.com and you'll notice the download link for Mono. Just simply click it, select your operating system and the version you need. Uh, install that and you'll notice that there's also a link for Mono Development. I would not recommend using this as I haven't been able to get it work to work with the, the debugging in Unity. Uh, when Unity ships you your beta, they'll also ship you a link to their customized build of Mono Development, and that's the version I'm using. So we'll close that down, open up a project that I've started just for this little demonstration. Now it's a pr pretty simple demonstration. All it is is just a button when you click it, it increases the counter by 10. You'll notice in our project window, all we have is this little script and the scene file. So the first thing you're going to want to do to integrate Mono Development in is just click the Sync Mono Development Project. And if you open up your folder where your files are saved, it'll create, uh, I've had it open previously, but generally it's just going to create those two files for you, your solution file and your project file. Now you can open up Mono Development by clicking your solution file, but what we're going to do instead is set up Unity, the preferences. Now when you first start it up, it's going to be set to the built-in editor. All you have to do is just browse to wherever you installed your mono development and just click it. Now once you have that set, you can click any script you have and it'll automatically load up mono development for you. Now uh, here it is loading up. Uh, Let's just go straight into the debug mode. Now you notice you have your solution, your project, uh, your references. These are libraries that Unity adds. If you have any custom libraries you want to add, uh, just click Edit References, uh, point to where they are, and add them. Okay, down here you'll notice you have your Assets folder. Uh, this is going to be all the scripts that you have in your project, which you can notice down here. Now if you have any sort of folder hierarchy down here with your scripts in it, that will also be copied over to your Mono Development uh, solution over here. But you can add more scripts as well. Uh, let's add a quick one. A new file, we'll make it an empty class. We're just going to call it test2.cs. Uh, you'll notice the syntax is a little bit different. Uh, I'd recommend just, you can't use namespaces, so we'll just get rid of that bring that in. You don't want a constructor. You'll want to inherit from mono development. Oh, sorry, mono behavior. Actually, before you do that, I'd recommend just going over to another one that you have and copy your using statements if you're not sure exactly which two you need. We'll go back to the test. Up here in your using statements, I'm just going to put a space there. Copy, and then here. When you start typing in, it should say model behavior. There you go. Then, of course, uh, using Unitron, it always starts off with your void start and your void update. Now, I haven't been able to figure out a way to get Mono Development to create this little template file for you. Uh, if anyone knows, I'd be interested in finding out. But let's just go back to our program. So you see here it's just a simple script, create a counter, set it to zero. There's my button. When I click it, it calls this coroutine called increase counter, which is just a for loop that increases the counter by one uh, each iteration. Then you have a GUI label, which just simply displays the label on the screen. So the way debugging works is you have your windows down here where you can watch certain variables. We'll show you your local variables as they go along, your breakpoints, threads that are running, your call stack, and your immediate commands that you might want to enter. So let's just go to uh, local. Let's add some stuff to the watch. Let's do this, which is going to be this instance of the script. Let's also follow counter. Okay, so we have those set. Uh, after that, we'll just start setting breakpoints. Let's just quickly set a breakpoint right here. You can set multiple breakpoints if you want, but just for this demonstration, we're just going to set the one. Okay, here's some of the parts I don't like about it. When you want to start debugging, 
you have to click the debug uh, button up here and that starts a separate instance of Unity and I really wish it would just use the instance that I already have running of Unity um, but this is still beta, I'm sure they'll fix it. So I'm just going to close this instance. On that script we created, if you notice it's right here. So it's, once you create it in modern development it's already to use in your project. So we'll quickly close this down. Uh, we'll hit the debug button. It's going to fire up a little window here. Then down in your application output you'll see it loading up all the assemblies it needs and when it's ready it loads up your Unity for you. So just simply hit play the first time we hit this button, it'll seem like it froze up. Now with a larger screen, you can keep both open at the same time and be able to watch both. But you'll notice our red brake line has turned yellow. And if you look down here, you'll see the state, the uh, variables you're watching. You can also go into local and just everything that you have set up, you can watch. Now this hasn't worked 100% of the time for me. Sometimes I just get question marks down here. Uh, again, it is a beta. It's a great step in the right direction, but I don't feel it's quite ready yet. Uh, it's something I would definitely use. I still tend to use uh, my debug statements a little bit more, at least till this is flushed out a bit more. But let's just go through. You have four buttons up here. You have your step over, your step into, and your step out. Okay. The, basically, the way this works is this will step over the command that you're currently at. Whoops, and I just clicked step into. Uh, but step into, uh, if you're, say, at the beginning of this for loop and you click it, it'll step into the for loop. And then it'll step out. If you're in the for loop, it'll step you out of the for loop. And it'll begin the next iteration. So I've clicked, let's go back to watch. Now uh, I've clicked step into. Nothing should have happened in our project yet. Uh, that's not, I can't click to get to Unity, and I can't Alt-Tab to get to that little instance that modern development makes. So if you notice, it still doesn't do anything over here. So let's just step over it right now. So counter is still zero. Counter is one now. If we go over here. It will change to one, but I find it takes a while to do. Now, I'm not sure if I've set something up wrong. I don't believe so. The instructions are pretty easy to follow. It doesn't always update right away, and I find it, it takes quite a while. But then again, keep in mind this is a beta. Let's just start stepping through some more. So let's just step over again. So now we're going to update the, the, the display. And there we go. Counter is one, it said. We're going to the locals. As you can see, there's still quite a bit more to be worked out on this, but it is a great step in the right direction. Uh, with this private instance, well, it's not really private, with this instance that, of Unity that's created with Mono Development, if you should happen to quit Mono Development without closing this first, I find it'll crash and lock up and then you have to force quit it. So make sure that when you are done and ready to quit, you go to Application, Output, click this little red X, it'll quit the instance of Unity that's running, and then it's safe just to quit out. Anyway, there's a quick overview of mono development with Unity. Like I said, it definitely needs a little bit more work, but it's a step in the right direction. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.